Hey, Internet. So today I want to talk to you about how I connected AI to my browser to help the debugging. I'm sure many of you ran into this case where there's an error in your browser and you have to take a screenshot, you have to take the web console logs, you have to copy and paste all of that back into your IDE, such as cursor or windsurf, and hope that it fixes the bug. If it doesn't, you have to do that again and again and again. And I've done that many times. And I still do that sometimes today, depending on the complexity of the bug. But I've actually found a way to connect your browser to AI uh, using MCP servers. So I want to actually show you how I do that today and how I save time with actually having AI automate that entire process where it takes its own screenshots and takes the errors from the logs and then pulls that back in. So with that being said, let's get started. All right. So this is our picture for today. It's a, it's a sad guy doing some work in a great Gatsby situation debugging a clock as we do with computers. Now, the disclaimer I'll make with this video before we start is that the MCP servers that are available today as of April 17th, 2025, they're somewhat finicky and not always they don't always work correctly with certain um, clients such as Cursor and or uh, Windsurf. With that being said, I'm almost 90% sure that in the next three to five months, those issues will be no longer issues. And these MCP servers will actually be able to interact with the browser in a consistent basis without having to deal with different types of bugs with the MCP server just working. And now the reason I said that is I've tried probably six MCP servers to solve this problem in the last probably five hours. And of those, I found maybe two that work accurately with one client, which is OneSurf. Now, before we get into that and talking about the things I've tried, I want to talk about the issue that we all run into. And at least I'd run into, and I'm sure you'd run into as well. And this is what that issue manifests kind of, uh, the way I, the way I see it manifest in my own workflow. So we have two things here. We have cursor or we have windsurf. Uh, you can use Klein is another one that people use. And I think there's another one called Ader, which is what the cool cats use that use only terminal or something like that. And there's different ways that we can use AI with uh, IDEs. And now in this case, we are building stuff with these IDEs, we're writing code. So we build something. And once we've built something, we may or may not uh, test that thing. We may just keep building and not test. Hopefully you test. And once you've tested that thing, either with a unit test or whatever else, either, usually if it's actually, let me make a comment. So usually if it's a unit test, um, it's gonna be, get tested by AI automatically. That's pretty easy and baked in to do. But if it's an integration test where you have to go to the website, push a button, do a thing, and the error manifests in the browser, oftentimes what I have to do, and I'm sure what a lot of other people have to do, is you have to copy and paste those console logs. And the console log, if you don't know what that is, is you go to your three dots here, and you go to inspect. Actually, sorry, <laughs> I should know what I'm doing, right? Um, I think it's F12 I can do here because the uh, thing here is not allowing me to do it. Oh, no. Well, I can't do it on this screen. Let's go to another screen because this uh, draw thing is messing me up. So if you go to inspect here, you go to console, and then you have all your logs here. Hopefully I didn't share anything secretive because this is just a console, um, but uh, oh well. So you have to copy those logs out or you have to take screenshots. And you also have to take screenshots when you wanna make UI adjustments. So maybe you want the button to be moved to the left or whatever else, you have to take screenshots and let it know where you want it to be moved and uh, different things like that. So if you test the thing, you do that and it doesn't work. That's the next step. If it doesn't work, it likely breaks. Then you have to troubleshoot what happens. After you've troubleshooted it, you go into that process, like I stated, of taking screenshots and call, come copying and pasting stuff out. You have to grab the error and or errors, likely, more likely errors, multiple. And you also wanna grab some screenshots. A thing that I'll sometimes do is I'll even annotate. And the annotation piece is uh, extra time consuming and I'm not even sure if it works accurately, but it feels like it does work for me. And it's sometimes that that's all that matters is the feeling and the vibes as we know with vibe coding. And the way I annotate this is I'll just take a screenshot on my MacBook and I'll then annotate on the screen like I'm doing with you right now is if we have something on the screen, I'll then say, okay, I want, I'll basically circle this and I'll say, hey, I want this over here or hey, this is where the issue resides and I want you to look specifically at this in the screen to solve it or things like that. And my hope is that the AI, when it looks at the screenshots, it can interpret the annotations. And I'm pretty sure it does because it actually is more specific in certain cases when there's a lot of stuff on the screen. And I wanted to focus on a very specific thing. With that out of the way, we have to go through this loop. And in this loop, this is a time consuming loop. It takes a lot of effort to go back and forth and do this. Now, this is a common issue with these IDEs that are uh, AI centric. But if you use an IDE that's in the browser already, such as these here, they actually have this, uh, this feature baked into it. So these are all different IDEs that people are talking about today. 
and one of which is quite new, which is the Firebase Studio. But we have V0, we have Bolt.new, Lovable, and there are many others, and I actually love the fact there are so many, and there's probably a lot that I've forgotten. But all of these have somewhat of a feature baked into them, where when an error occurs in the browser, these AI um, IDEs that are in the browser, they have access to those screenshots in the web console, et cetera. So they tend to be able to solve those issues more effectively than the editor IDEs, from my experience. But the issue with these is oftentimes you, it's hard to build complex uh, applications because the way that these work, at least from my experience, and it's quite minimal, is they tend to rewrite all the code in every single iteration. And that's not super conducive to context windows that are limited when it comes to the output from a model. So it's building complex applications in these is not necessarily conducive to that today, but in the future, they probably will be. And then another thing I wanted to call out here is that it's this feature is kind of baked into ChatGPT directly and Claude directly, where when you work with these two tools, when they render applications in their Canvas feature, so um, for ChatGPT, that's going to be the Canvas feature, Canvas. And then for Claude, that's going to be Artifacts. And both of these have this rendering ability. So when you write code inside of it, you can ask it to render that thing for you and then show you on screen. And oftentimes with errors in the screen, it'll say uh, attempt to fix or something like that, where there's an option you can select. This says attempt to fix. You push the button and it automatically pushes that error into the chat where the AI can then try to fix it and then re-render it for you. So it's, a, it's like a half, a half version of this being fully baked into these. So this tool and this feature exists today, but it doesn't, it doesn't exist in these tools over here that are IDEs that tend to have the ability to build more complex applications. So the workaround, the, the kind of the method that I wanted to share with you today is using MCP servers. And I just wanted to show one way, one kind of one more thing is that you can see like we, we hit the wall, we hit the wall and we bounce back. We can't escape. We can't escape this little, this, this wall that we're stuck in. But eventually we'll be able to break this wall. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a different color to get us excited. We can break through the wall and we can connect to the browser and the browser can talk to us. And the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna come over here and we're gonna pull this up and we're gonna impress you with my ability to move things around. <laughs> or maybe not because the pen mode's still on. Okay, here we go. Boom. We'll move those errors away. We'll uh, deselect this and try not to delete everything else. And there we go. Now, we'll even delete this box because we're free. We're free from the chains that have confined us. All right, so now we can actually interact with the browser. And the way we can do this is we can have Cursor and or Windsurf interact with these MCP servers. This is apparently the MCP logo. And these are just a few. I said I mentioned probably I practiced with five or six of these before this video. I've played with Playwright, I've played with BrowserBase, and I've played with this other one here. I forgot what it's called. Um, but they all have their pros and cons. One of the issues I found, and this is, like I said, just as of now, but Cursor specifically, and sadly, uh, kind of sucks when it comes to using the ability to interact with browsers. And the reason being is that oftentimes the error I've run into is that the context window fills up. And this is actually something I've not ran into in the past, but it basically says, hey, this chat window is too long. You need to summarize it and move on to the next chat window. And it's, uh, I don't have it open here, but basically this whole chat window side here, and let's, let's see if we can actually draw on screen for you even more, is this, this screen over here, this basically says, hey, this is filled up. And we can no longer um, we can no longer use this. You have to summarize it and then go here to start a new chat. And that's the first time it's ever happened to me. Um, it's quite interesting that it's happened. But this happens every single time you use MCP, uh, or at least from my experience. Any of these options, it happens. So with that being said, I had to go to Windsurf. And using Windsurf, it works sometimes, but sometimes Windsurf completely crashes, and just you have to restart Windsurf. And I'm not sure why that happens. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's a browser issue. I've done some research and I've I've tried like six different configurations and one of them actually started working and I'll kind of show you what that is. Um, and that one configuration is actually using this uh, little MCP that I forgot the name of. And it connects you to the browser, allows you to do screenshots, et cetera. Playwright sometimes works and sometimes doesn't crash. And browser base altogether is um, not the greatest uh, use from my experience. It, it's a great tool and it has really great purposes for agents, but not in this case. So that's kind of the run through of the issue we run into, the overall high level solution of how we can do this and how other types of apps have this feature baked into them already. Now, that being stated, I wanna show you some of the things I've tried and also how I got it working. 
So like I said, we have browser-based MCP, which has two variants. It has both browser-based and stagehand. Uh, stagehand is the one I use because that's the one that has the ability to, I think, interact with the web console. Um, then we have these types of things here, which is basically a marketplace that has all times of MCP servers on it. And if you just search browser in the search bar, you'll come across tons of them that exist and you can try all of these. Uh, be, be careful because some of these are quite, uh, can be sketchy. They can siphon off data from you. So you gotta be careful there. Um, this is the one that I ended up using. And also you can be careful. You need to be careful because this is some like random person that created this. So I use it and then I'll delete it. Um, but with this, uh, it's easy to set up and actually what it's called is uh, browser MCP. And you can just download this into your uh, Chrome. So it's a Chrome extension. You download it, you connect it to a certain tab, and then it has access to that tab. And then it can directly do stuff on that tab. And then we have a uh, playwright, which has execution automation from this uh, specific re repo. And then we also have Microsoft's version of playwright as well. And what we're going to use is we're going to use Windsurf, like I said, because it's the one that works. And I'm going to show you on a simple example that I have for an app that I built for a friend that basically aggregates uh, job postings associated to a certain position and uh, all kinds of cool things. But that's not the that's not the thing we're talking about today. We're talking about the browser automation. So how do you set this up? The way you set this up is very straightforward. Uh, like any other MCP server, you just need to straight, like basically configure it. Uh, luckily, they have different drop downs here for a cursor, Windsurf, etc. Really all you do want is you want to copy this JSON. And if you already have other MCPs existing, you just want to copy this one here because uh, you basically can um, bundle them all into the same config. So you can have multiple different um, tools to use. You'd copy that out. You would then go to Windsurf settings, Windsurf settings, it would take you to this tab. And you would then go to under Cascade, they have add servers. But the cool thing about Windsurf here is this is something the cursor doesn't have, which is a kudos to, Win to Windsurf, is if you go to add server, they already have baked in uh, MCP servers that are quote unquote official, where you don't have to do any like complex configuration. All you have to do is push add and it automatically adds that server for you. And you can, your AI will eventually start using it if it needs to, which for me is uh, pretty dope. And I really like that. But if you don't want to use that, so I like you can see here, where is it? Playwright. I can add this. I did add it and I played around with it. But like I said, it crashed sometimes, so I decided not to. But you can do a custom one. So you can add custom, and then it gives you this configuration here. So basically, you just have to copy and paste this in, which is exactly what we have here. All right. And then uh, once you've pasted this in, you can just run a quick ask for it to do something. And to do that, I'm going to have it do this right here. So I'm basically going to have it. Um, use this tool. It doesn't need to log in because I'm already logged in and I didn't want to share anything here on the interwebs that I shouldn't have. Um, so navigate to this thing, do this thing, and I'm going to press enter. And actually before I do that, sorry, another thing you need to do is on here, you need to make sure that your, your connection is set. So this is connected, but I'm going to disconnect and connect just to show you how it works. It gives you a little pop up here that says, Hey, I want to connect. So I've connected to that tab. So I then come here and say, Hey, do this thing which is basically I'm asking it to go to the specific location to run a scrape and then delete some items from that scrape. So we can come here and see it working. I need to come here and do it. And we'll move this over a bit. And now it's working. You can see it's moved over there. It's pressed the button. And also one thing I've set up for Windsurf is it's kind of like YOLO mode. It's interesting how Windsurf and Cursor remove that from their wording, which is funny. Um, so it's not really YOLO, but it's basically allowing it to do whatever it wants. So it's going through, it's adding um, edits. It's not looking for accepts from me. It's at running stuff in the terminal. So it's like the ultimate AI where it gives you access to everything. I wouldn't recommend using this all the time. This is just for me to show you a demo. Um, but if you're building something that's more robust, I recommend you actually accept things and, and look at stuff at least until we get to like GPT six or seven, and then it'll be better than all of us. And we can just sit back and play video games all day. But um, as this goes through, it is running into errors, which is expected, sadly. Um, and now that it's run into errors, there's a good chance that it'll break and it won't work. And we'll have to uh, pause video and I'll come back and hopefully have it working for you. But like I said, this is this is the beginning of uh, kind of these MCP servers are not the best. They're not the most robust, but uh, they exist and they're going to get better as, as all things do in AI within hours instead of months or years. All right. Third time's a charm. So I, I may have made the task easier because uh, our little MCP server couldn't do what it needed to do and I was struggling. So the engine that could, couldn't, and we're going to make it do it. So we're going to make it do something more simple. We just need to go there, select five items, I didn't even give it definitions of what five to select. It can choose whatever it wants and to then delete those items after it's selected them. All right. So I've added one, one last thing in here. I told it to be patient. Don't rush. Chill out.
And then we, the reason we need to chill out is because I think this thing is moving too fast and it's taking screenshots of the screen before there's actually anything to be looked at. So internet, hopefully this is the last time I have to do this because it's starting to get late. It's my bedtime. Hopefully this works. Okay. Selected a bunch of stuff. Did it delete it? I selected a bunch of stuff. Did it delete it? It keeps reselecting things. I'm going to turn my light on. It's starting to get dark here. Oh, that was bright. Sorry about that. Good moment. Did it. Deleted them, internet. It deleted all of them. It didn't do what I wanted it to do, but it deleted something, and it achieved a task. And we have succeeded, in a sense. So, as you can see, um, this is definitely not there. It's not production ready, and, I mean, none of this stuff's production ready. But anyways, um, we were able to actually have it delete something and it took me a while. I had to go back and forth with it. And uh, with that being said, internet, I hope this is entertaining. I hope this is educational. If you liked it, please reshare it with your friends. And if you'd like to work with me, I have a company called Gradient Labs where we help organizations implement AI internally to automate their processes to increase productivity. So if you're interested, there's a link below. You can book a call with me. Uh, it's free. We can see if there's a good uh, fit. And if that would being said, internet, I'll see you next time.